Tonight's episode is entitled, This Far and No Further. Hey, Mike. Imagine. You're walking with a group of people along a beach. From where each person began their journey is not important. What is important is where everyone is going. Since the group is headed in the same direction, you think everybody has the same destination in mind. Because somewhere ahead of you is a place that can only be called, for lack of a better word, utopia. And it's real. It's not a dream. It's not a fanciful idea someone once wrote about. It's an actual place where people live their lives. And you've seen it. Everyone walking on this beach has. The people who live or visited there have written about this utopia. They've taken pictures of it and made films about it. And it's right there ahead of you. Why wouldn't everyone want to go there? All anybody has to do is keep walking toward it. The journey along this beach has gone on for years. You become friends with the people walking with you. And then something inexplicable happens. The person next to you stops in his tracks. Now, you've known this person for years, and you're confused. Why has he stopped? And what he does next is even more confounding. He takes out a beach umbrella, and he plants it in the sand. Then he unfolds a beach chair, and he sits in the shade. You ask, what are you doing? We've got to keep going. He looks up at you in feigned confusion, Keep going where? I've always wanted to be right here. I've got everything I need right here. Just look at this ocean view, he answers. You look out and see the same view of the water you've seen every day since you began walking. You have no idea why your friend picked this particular spot on the beach to just stop. You ask him, why here? I I thought we were all going to Utopia. We've talked about it for years. Why stop now? Your friend shifts uneasily in the beach chair. Your questions are obviously making him uncomfortable. He answers angrily, I don't know what you're talking about. This is where I've always wanted to be, and I don't think this utopia you're talking about even exists. I don't want to hear about it anymore. You try one more time. But but we've both seen pictures of it. We've both read about it. And before you can say another word... He looks you straight in the eye and he says, I'm going this far and no further. He turns and looks out over the ocean, repeating, this far and no further. And then your friend, someone you have known for a very long time, turns into a pile of stones. You stumble back in shock, looking about wildly, and see there are heaps of rocks scattered all up and down the beach. But now for the first time, you understand that these cairns mark the spot where someone has proclaimed this far and no further. And cut. Print it. In earlier versions, I added a bunch of stuff that would have made this walk along the beach more difficult. Like roving bands of Republicans who do everything imaginable to slow down or stop the progress of everybody walking on the beach. Or insane people hiding behind the dunes, suddenly rising up and shooting as many beach walkers as they can every day. I wrote about the Gallup World Poll naming Finland, Iceland, Denmark, Switzerland and the Netherlands as the happiest nations on earth. Countries where health care, education, and gun control were problems solved by social democracies. But I cut all that stuff out because metaphors aren't designed to carry too much weight. Rod Serling found that out during the fourth season of The Twilight Zone when he expanded the episodes from 30 to 60 minutes. It didn't work. 
Lesson learned, and the fifth and final season of The Twilight Zone went back to the half-hour format. Tell the tale and get out. This all started because some of the people I know who seemingly had their minds right, you can call them liberals or progressives, I don't care which, but they suddenly stopped and turned to stone. And each and every time it happened, I was surprised. Even though it has happened a lot, I've never gotten used to it. The gay couple who stopped working for social change the moment their state allowed gay people to marry. The friend who suddenly declared he didn't want to pay for anyone else's health care. Another friend who was actively against the war in Vietnam, but let the invasion of Afghanistan and Iraq slide on by. And on, and on, and on. It seemed like when health care or welfare or workers' rights or a woman's right to privacy came up in conversation, someone I thought I knew jarringly opposed it, essentially saying, this far and no further. Why? Well, simply put, when they reached the point where they got what they wanted, that's when they bailed. More crudely put, I've got mine, fuck you, Jack, which I understand is the Republican motto. The moment the phrase, this far and no further, is uttered, that's the moment empathy dies. So, does this mean that a bunch of people I know turned into Republicans or their evil twins, libertarians? Mm, pretty much. And the scary part is that a lack of empathy is the cornerstone of psychopathy. Last December, Scary Umar Haik edited, ended his article, Our American Psychopaths, with this. Are American psychopaths? Here's my answer, and you probably won't like it. If they're not, then what are they? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? I've spent a lot of time writing about stupid people, crazy people, and psychopaths. Most of the time, it was an attempt to chart where they came from, and all those words I've written don't matter anymore. Now I don't care if they came from Muncie, Indiana, or Mars. It doesn't matter if they were raised in a loving home or by Hannibal Lecter. What matters now is they're here. They're well-placed in the media in financial institutions, in both houses of Congress, and they control most of what we see and hear in what passes for the news. And the scary part is they've succeeded in turning some of our friends and family into stone. And the solution is, I have no idea. All I know is that we have to keep moving down the beach toward what we know is true while always remembering what Satchel Page said. Don't look back. Something might be gaining on you. Regards, from beautiful British Columbia, Bob. Uh, you can read all of this and listen to all this and find all sorts of things to either um, delight you or frustrate you or make you just go a little crazier than you are already by going to Bob's website, voicesinourheads.com. Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcast. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com and never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.